Good day, folks. This is Greg Giddy at Green Pastures Farm. I'm wrapping up uh, the final part of uh, this is part five of, you know, people have asked me a lot, you know, on smaller farms or just getting started. Heck, you may have 100 acres, whatever. In this uh, example, I use 20 acres and people say, but why five cows? Well, here in Boone County, uh, the stocking rate's about four acres per, per cow for a year. And so on 20 acres, that would be uh, five cows. That's why that five's up there. But, you know, if you live in Illinois or someplace else where you've got deeper soil, uh, higher fertility, it's going to be completely different. If you're in Utah where you get six, six to eight inches of rain a year, you know, out there it's, you know, 60 to 70 acres per cow. So you can't use this universally all over the world. All this is an example, okay? And I said earlier post on one of the other talks, go to your local NRCS office. They can tell you, and that's Natural Resource Conservation Service. They're in every state in the United States. They can tell you what that stocking rate is so you don't get overstocked. I think the worst thing you can do is to get all antsy. Somebody offers you a bunch of animals. You bring too many into your farm at the start, and it's just a wreck. And that's because they overgraze the whole pasture. And your grass doesn't have time to grow back. Your animals get thin. They don't breed. You're trying to do grass-fed beef, maybe. They don't gain weight. They get sick. You're out there giving them a shot. I mean, it's just a wreck. Don't do that. You need to stock appropriately. Okay. Um, there was a lot of comments about the, 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 the couplers. And um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to cover that just a little bit more in depth. This is kind of a wrap up of all the things that people have been asking and some of the things that I forgot to mention. Um, so this is an overview right here. And what this is, folks, is th this is a PVC, I'm sorry, yeah, PVC pipe, six inch. And here's the cap on it. This is ground level up here. This is the ground. That wavy line is the ground. So it's buried down in the ground. And here in Missouri, we can get by, you know, 20 inches from the bottom of your, this is my supply line down here on the bottom. I'm trying to stay out of the way of everybody. That round thing is the supply line, three quarter inch, okay, in this particular situation. Now, if you're going across 100 acres and you're going to be supplying a big herd of cattle, I wouldn't recommend three quarter inch. You need a bigger supply, okay? This is for 20 acres. We're talking five cows here. Uh, in time, you might be able to get your stocking rate up or you might be able to run 10 cows on here later on, not at the start. Okay, so here's your supply line. This piece right here is this. This is the female. Oops. This is the female. This is a plast, this is the plast and quick coupler. This is the female, you plug in, this is hooked right down here into your supply line. Okay, it screws right into the T. That's three quarter inch pipe threads. Just screws right into a, a female T, okay? Put the cap on it, so it's setting down in here. The animals can't break it off, okay? It's down below the ground, and this, this six inch pipe here actually acts as a heat reservoir to keep this from freezing. Now, in Minnesota, that would freeze solid if it's only 24 inches deep, but in the Midwest, here in Missouri, we can get by with about 24 inches, okay? I would say probably from here all the way to Virginia, going east. I mean, I've got relatives in Virginia, their temperature is really similar to ours. But the cap, when you get done with this thing, put a cap on, it keeps critters from falling down in this hole. So this is setting down in here. Here's my water supply line. I'm going to plug this male into there like that. And so this hose is coming up out of that line, out of that PVC pipe. And the cap, of course, has been taken off. And this end is hooked to my stock tank. Heck, let's just draw a stock tank up here. Okay, here's my water. So this end, this end is screwed on right onto the side of my tank. So when I plug in, the stock tank's going to fill up. Folks, here's, here's my Joe Mega Flow valve. It's setting on the side of that tank. And when the cattle drink, this drops down, fills it back up. So I think I've, been, I think I've answered or tried to explain that a little more thorough. Folks, the quick couplers, the, 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 Plassen, the Plassen female coupler is $14.95. 
This mail is four dollars and ninety-five cents. I just bought a hydrant today to put in up by a shop where we need it. It's right up by the barn, and it's really handy to have. But you know, I had to pay for that hydrant. Now it's a good one. It's a hundred and thirty dollars. Fourteen ninety-five for this. Four ninety-five for this. For twenty dollars, you can have a water point. That's what I'm trying to say. And the cattle, the cattle cannot break it off. Make sure you put the cap back on it though when you're done. And it's nice to put a stake out here so you don't drive over that in your pasture with a foil or a pickup truck. You could break that or drop off in there, crush your pipe. I like to put a PVC, uh, something PVC or a fiberglass rod or something white that you can see. It needs to be pretty tall because your grass grows up and covers that up. You could hit that. But make sure you put a cap on it. I've reached down in those holes at night and there's a furry critter down in there. Folks, it is not a pleasant surprise to reach down and have something snarling at you. Okay, or it's dead. You got to pull that dead thing out of there in pieces because it's been there a month. It's not pleasant. It's happened to me. Put a cap on it. All right, I'll get off of that. All right, one of the other things that I forgot to cover. Very important, very important. That is called a spinning jenny. Okay, the way it works is you set your high tensile wire on here. Now, this is, this is the wire that we're going to put around the perimeter of our farm. We, for those of you all didn't see the part one, go back and watch it. But we got this 20-acre farm. It had some bad fence on it, chunks. We patched the outside, but then we ran a high tensile wire electric around the inside. That's what this is for. Folks, your wire goes on here. These... You, know, you loosen these nuts, they push out into your wire, it keeps it on here. This part spins. The bottom part stays solid on the ground. See that? It spins. If you put a high tensile wire, when you buy it, it comes in 4,000 and 2,000 foot rolls. It's got these great big wire crimps on it. If you cut those crimps off and you don't have it on a spinning jenny, it's going to explode like a, like a slingy. It's going to go everywhere. You're never going to get that wire unrolled. Great story. I had a couple down the road, newly married couple. I said, I'll be there on Saturday to help you. They, they had a roll of wire. And I had the Jenny. I said, I'll be down there Saturday morning. Well, they couldn't wait. They went down there and cut that thing open. And I mean, it exploded. It was over 100 feet just going everywhere. They never got any fence belt. Don't do that. Okay, so you got your spinning Jenny. You can get those at Powerflex. Uh, there's several different models. There's like a, a cheaper model. It's like $69. The one I showed you there, I think that's $149. It's a little bit better one. Um, let's see. The other thing. Oh, grounding system. I'm going to cover that in a separate video. It's, it's going to be a little bit long video, but I'm going to intensely cover grounding because the grounding is the most important part of your fence. If you have a terrible ground, bad clamps, you don't set it up right, folks, you're not going to have a charge out there. The animals will not get shocked. Um, oh, solar chargers. People were asking me about solar chargers. Absolutely. You can use a solar charger. Um, they make all different kinds. There's one that's got the, actually the solar panel on it. There's one that's at, you can buy these that just have a little uh, panel on the front. You can buy them that has panels the size of this tape, this, this board here, great big ones. They're expensive. I will give you this recommendation. If you do buy something that has a pretty good sized solar panel on it, get it out of sight. Don't let people see it from the road. It will be gone. Somebody will walk in there and take that at night when you're not out there. They're too expensive to be letting somebody walk off with them. Uh, what's the other one? Oh, people ask me, when's the best time to start something like this? Let's just say you got this piece of ground. Do you want to bring animals in the winter, or the fall, the spring, summer, whatever? I would not bring them in in the winter time if I just got this piece of ground. I'm using the winter time to get my fence up, okay? Design how I'm going to do my water system. Stock up maybe on some temporary fencing material. Start sourcing some livestock. Don't just go out there and buy some stock and throw in here. Get some pretty nice ones. You know, you, you're, you, I think the biggest mistake you can make is get all antsy and jump in and just buy anything. Folks, there's some crazy cows out there. 
There's cows out there that can hurt you. They can run over you. They're spooky. They run through your fence. They're just hard to handle. Uh, I would recommend going and buying them from somebody that has them on their farm. They handle their livestock. And you can tell when you walk out in the herd, if they all take off running into the woods, you don't want to bring those onto your farm. You think they're going to do something different on your farm because they like you? No. They're going to run off. And they may not stop. They may go through your fence. Then they get out on the highway or whatever. It's, it's not a good thing. Um, so in the wintertime is a great time to set all this up. You know, you can, you can play around with how you're going to do the water. And the other thing, I didn't cover this earlier. You don't have to have water on this farm. If you have a water source that you can fill every day and bring onto this farm, you can move a tub around five cows. They're not going to drink that much water. You can actually carry water into here and put it wherever you've got them with your temporary fencing. You wouldn't even need a water source. Uh, there's a guy on, on our YouTube that follows me. Um, he's got 12,000 acres. Nobody wanted it because it didn't have any water on it. God's making a darn, darn good living on it. He's running goats and sheep. He has to carry the water, but he doesn't, you know, that's his job is to carry that water. He's making a good living. He got the land. Nobody wanted it. So how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How much are you willing to work? That's, that's a good one. Um, so I'm going to take this off. Just give us a clean surface here. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the size of the farm. If you've got 20 acres, I wouldn't put any permanent fence in the middle of it. You can do it all with this poly that I was talking about on the earlier talks. If it's 60 acres, 60 acres, this might be one wire that I would put in right down the middle but this now when i say one wire i'm talking about a high tensile wire 12 gauge with that spinning jenny now i can take my reels and i can handle this a lot easier okay 60 acres that's a pretty good chunk of ground to take a reel and go from here all the way across every day okay so this is going to allow you to do that with a very short reel when you get done you got a gate at the end here you can come over here and start doing the same thing coming this way Okay, so that one wire down the middle is going to save you an immense amount of time. And what did it cost you? It didn't cost you hardly anything. We're only talking one wire. And post, you know, a paddock division like that, uh, you, you can go up to 40 feet between posts. So you have just a, a fiberglass post or a timeless post every, 20, every 40 feet in there. That's not going to cost you much money to do that. It's going to save you a lot of time. But I would put a gate... Well, you don't have to put a gate if you don't want to. Um, you know, you can actually uh, train cattle to do this. Let me, let me get all this off here. You can train cattle. It doesn't take very long. If your fence, let's just say our fence is across here like this. And here's our post. We're going to raise that fence up and just put a fiberglass post underneath. If you don't have fiberglass, get you a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, that would have to be, uh, let's say, eight feet. And on your PVC pipe, you want to cut a hole, a V in it like that. That holds your wire right there. Put it right up there. Raise that up and just sit to your cows. Take the mineral feeder or the water and pull it through there and let it, and then go, go back to your foil or go back to the house. Those cows will learn to walk underneath that wire. You don't need a gate anywhere on your farm. Let them walk under the fence. It saves you a lot of time. Uh, gates are expensive. You got to have corner posts on each side. You got to have the gate itself. It's just something more that they can tear up. Um, so, yeah, you can teach cattle to go underneath fences by raising them up. It doesn't take very long because there's pretty good grass over there. And you just pulled the mineral feeder through there. They're like, I think there's a wire there, but I don't see one. Just go away, give them some time, and they will walk through there. Um, I think that was uh, about the end of this talk. I've had a lot of people asking me about our sheep fencing, and that is going to be the a video coming up, a series. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be next week, but it's going to be coming, and uh, I'm still working on that. Anyway, everyone have a great day, and this is Greg Judy signing off, and final series of part five on setting up a farm with 20 acres. Thank you all.